Right, so as promised, here's a short video on how to create a free account with AstroPrint to slice your STL file or your Fusion 360 project into a G-code file for the 3D printer. So on the workspace for Fusion 360, on the left-hand side, there's a educational license to open up your Fusion account or just follow the instructions that uh, Mr. Field would have emailed you. Um, going down, this is if you want to do Fusion 360 online um, and not from your desktop or from your um, from your from your laptop. This is best if you've got a Chromebook or if you've got a, a laptop um, that's maybe uh, uh, lacking some memory. So then you use the online version of Fusion 360. So online slicer. There's a little video that you can click on, which is um, actually one that I'm now going to replace with the one I'm, I'm doing at the moment. And then below the, uh, below that is the, the link that you need to click. Click on the link to open a free account with AstroPrint. So we're going to click on that now. And you're going to say start using, start using AstroPrint. And then you're going to go on the basic account at the bottom. You're going to click there and you're going to put in your details and it will send you an email and you will be registered. I'm already logged in and um, let's just familiarize ourselves with, with what is what is here. So um, I'll call that the home button or the dashboard. You always want to go back to the dashboard if you, if you do things. The very first thing you will do once you've logged on is you will load a printer. So you'll click on printer add new printer profile you will see i've already got ender 3 loaded but this is the process select the printer creality a b c creality 3d and then the, it's in the three versus version two so just in the three and add my printer profile that's it done okay so there it is i'm going to click back to there Go back. I'm now going to add the material. We will always be using PLA. It says PLA there. So how to add it? Add more material pros, uh, profile. PLA. Boom. Select it and you're in. Back to the dashboard. Don't worry about the settings for now. Leave it as it is. Okay, so print the profiles material all done. The next thing I would recommend is that you um, create in, in Google Drive a folder for your STL and G-code files. On Fusion 360, uh, whether you use the desktop one or you use the one that's online, your files get stored on the cloud. So your, um, your Fusion 360 files get stored on the cloud. When you create an STL file, you have to save that somewhere. So if you've got a laptop, save it somewhere in your laptop. Otherwise, the best place to save it is in the cloud, so it's, it's, it's accessible from, from anywhere. Now, when we use AstroPrint, all our files go in the design library. I'm just going to delete all of this. And then I will go through the process on how I suggest you do it. I suggest you've got a folder for every project that you do. So if we go back to the dashboard, click on design library. I've got no folders, no files there. I suggest the first thing that you do here is you create a new folder. And um, in this case, we're going to call this folder Keering because our Keering STL file is going to go in there. At the moment, zero design, zero print files. And click on it. And I'm going to upload a file. And I've already got my STL file sitting somewhere. You can have that in Fusion in, 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 your, in your Google Drive. Um, for example, there's my Google Drive there. And I've got heaps of stuff in there. Um, my drive... Just for example, I've got shortcuts up here, uh, Fusion 360, CNC, uh, 3D printer, and I've, I've, got, I've got access to heaps and heaps and heaps of heaps of, of STL files. But for now, all that we're going to do is uh, we're just going to load that Keering STL file. Stereo lithography mesh and we're going to load my keyring one it's going to go in there boom uploading there it is now if you click 
if you click on the white versus on the actual name, if you click on the name, it opens up this screen. Uh, rename, move, you can click on slice directly. Or if we go back to keyring and you click on the white, just another way of, of looking at it. And I'll show you the difference once you've got your G code file, because clicking on the white shows you how long it's going to take to print. Okay, so there's your file. Next thing that you want to do, go back to the dashboard, click on build plate. So now that will show you the build plate of the 3D printer. There it is. And we are going to add the project that we want to convert, which is the keyring. There it is. I'm going to zoom in. It automatically places it in the middle. Okay, so there's the keyring. You can now um, either click on it and, um, and move it. Click on move. Move it to where you want it. I'm just going to leave it where it is. Or you can click on the scale and you can make it bigger. Now it's locked. So always keep the aspect ratio locked. Otherwise you're going to pull this out of proportion. Now in this example, I might just say um, the X, which is the red bit, which is the, which is the X axis, horizontal like this. And the Y is the green one, vertical. And then Z is the up and down one. Okay. So all I'm going to do is an example. I'm just going to change that 30 to a 50. Enter. And you can see that it's gone a bit bigger. Okay, so that's it done. Click back on the on the print bed if you want that menu to disappear. Uh, click on that again if you want it back. Scale, rotate. Sometimes it's easier to um, to rotate a, a project through 90 degrees. 90. And print it like this. In the case of the... Um, of the keyring, it's better to have it back, um, back flat, down like that, um, and that's it. So rotate, scale, move. Very seldom will you use the move. You'll probably use the scale and the rotate more. So click on there. We click on print. It's going to give a name. Um, I'm just going to take the STL extension. I'll just call it keyring, and we're going to put it in the keyring folder save it will now bring up the slicer details so there's your the curing we're going to make sure we are going to use the ender we're going to use pla we're going to use the draft setting that's it the normal setting it's it's got it to do with the resolution the print quality um, the draft does 0.2 millimeters per layer and the normal is 0.1, so it will take twice as long to print. Okay, so draft, um, I'm not going to select support. If you selected support, um, exactly like this figure shows, you can't, cannot print in MIDI. Okay, so the support will enable you to, to go underneath. You can click on advanced slicer settings uh, if you want to have a look. For now, don't play around with, with things too much. Um, speed is the one that you'll probably adjust at some point. When it lifts off, off the bed, maybe reduce the speed. But I'll also show you at some point, I'll put another video on, on how to reduce the speed on the on the, uh, the Creality Ender machine itself. So there's the quality. Point 0.2. Um, that's the setting at the moment. We can change it to point 0.1 or if you want a higher resolution, even less than that. There's material, printing temperatures, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to worry about all of that. The only thing that you need to click is draft and support if it's needed. In this case, we don't have to click support. All that we do now is you click slice. Sliced. If you click on your keyring, it says there's one print file. If you then click on the white, it will say to you, this is going to take 16 minutes and 35 seconds. And there's 15 layers. It's draft quality using PLA using the Ender 3 printer. That's it, easy as. Click that button and you will download the G code file. There's the G code file. I'm going to go show in folder. And I'm just going to change this name so it's easier for me. I'm just going to call this. Uh, if you call it A, it's going to be at the top of the memory stick file and you'll, um, you'll easily find it once you put it into the printer. A keyring save and i would suggest um, you either now go save it on the memory stick to print it or save it in your google drive 
Or you might have, after you've done this, save it, download it, or put it directly in your, in your Google Drive folder. Okay, but there you go. So there's your STL file. Here's your folder back to the design library. If you want to go back to the dashboard design library, there's your keyring. There's two files in there. The one is your original STL file, and the other one is your um, is your print file. It's your G code file. Now, if you click on it there, there's your G code file, the one that you've just downloaded. You can also, if you click on it there, go back to your build plate. Because you know now it says, set, if you click on it there, it says to you, it's, it says how long it will take to print. So click there, it says it's 60 minutes, 35 seconds at uh, draft quality. You can, for interest, say click on it. Open the build plate. It will put it back on the build plate. And possibly just change the resolution just so that we can see the difference. Oh, scale. Just make sure it's 50. Yep, I'm happy with that. I am just going to go down and go print. All that I want it back in there. Um, I might just call this uh, uh, resolution res key. So I know it's, it's something else. Save in the keyring folder. Save. All I'm going to change now is I am going to keep it on normal. That's it. Same everything and then just say slice. Active slice is sliced. So in the keyring folder, uh, there's a print file, reskey.stl. You can also see the time. This is a little bit later. So if I click on that one, there's 28 layers. layers. It will take me 31 minutes as opposed to 15 layers and 60 minutes so roughly twice as long um, and roughly twice as many layers um, higher resolution for what we do in the workshop we're just going to go with the uh, with a draft feature there it says normal versus draft that's it easy as download the file and put this g-code file put that g-code file on the memory stick for the 3d printer i'll later on do another video to show you how to uh, put it on the g on the on the 3d printer and how to play around with some settings on that always go back to your to your home screen or to your um to the design library files for example if you want to do another folder new folder hammer go into hammer Upload a new file. Your STL file goes in there. It's in. I can now go back to my dashboard, home screen, build plate. These are my two folders. I want to do the hammer. There's my STL file. Pull it in. Way bigger than, than what the build plate is. So it won't really print. It will give you an error as well. I'm just going to Press on scale. I'm going to make this 50 along the x axis. Oh, I've moved it. Uh, scale. Make the scale 50. Here we go. A bit smaller. You can move it wherever you want it. Done. And now I'm going to go print. I want to go put it back in that folder. I'll just leave it like that. I suppose it's fine. Save. It will now give me the parameters of the print where I choose the printer and the material you can leave everything as it is just change that to draft easy as um, this hammer actually tapers up there and that's not touching the, the print bed so what I will do in the ha hammer's case I will select support and it will add some some in there so I'm gonna say slice slice this in there um, and if I click there there it is, it's a print file. If I click there, it will tell me it's going to take 6 minutes and 40 seconds, 27 layers. It's in the draft draft setting. Out of interest, if you go back there and you click on your G-Code viewer, and we go and open up our G-Code file,
it should show you how it's going to look when it prints it. And what you will see is that underneath my hammer, that's where it's printing the support. Because it's up in the air. So you gotta, you've got to select support. If you don't select the support, this, this print won't work. And I think if you remember in class, it actually lifted this part up. So there you go. So back to your dashboard. Right, enjoy.